Uh, this is a trans woman having not only a, like get your balls touched by TSA agents, that's what they do every single time they pat you down. So join the club on that. But there's also some emotional trauma that this person encountered. So we'll talk about that too. Article starts, starts out, my balls still hurt so bad. Trans woman claims TSA agent punched genitals then airport apologizes. Now, if, if that's actually true, obviously, like, what the hell? Like, that's obviously wrong. But one, one question I have about this story, and we'll see some of the, like, emotional trauma and the allegations about that. So one question I have with, like, the, the trauma aspect of it all is, is that what really happened? Or is this a victim mentality, victimizing themselves, and therefore you get this story about what happened, which is maybe overly exaggerated, in order to justify the self-victimization of the individual? I don't know, like, is she actually reporting what happened? Or is it another victim speaking stories that help victimize themselves. You gotta have people doing horrible things to you, and if they're not, you gotta say they're doing horrible things to you. You have to at least imagine it in order for you to be in the powerful position of being a victim that renders you absolutely powerless, but you feel powerful, not because you're actually powerful, but because you feel significant because you're getting attention and screaming the loudest as the victim. Don't know what the case is, but I'm curious which well, which is the case. Let's go on. The trans woman who goes by the name Mara claimed on social media that a TSA agent punched Mara in the genitals during a security checkpoint routine at the JFK airport on Saturday and yelled at Mara for having a penis and humiliated Mara in front of everyone. So again, if we live in a world where this is an accurate report of what happened, the TSA agent did a little nut check <laughs> and then yelled at and humiliated the person. That is so wrong. Like, obviously, like, physical violence speaks for itself. We won't even talk about that. But if the TSA agent did, in fact, yell at the biological man dressed as a woman and yelled at them, humiliated them, effectively shaming them for dressing as a woman, 100% uh, not on board with that. That's bullying behavior. That's not acceptable. And to me, it's absolutely disgusting. There's a second world where are those accusations that humiliated me, they yelled at me for having a, a penis. Is that this person interpreting through a maybe less than accurate filter the events in order to justify they themselves being a victim. By the way, they themselves is probably their pronouns. So this person took to social media. As we're going through this story, obviously, like Sherlock Holmes, which world is it? Is this really what happened? Or is this self-victimization? The fact that this person took to social media immediately to talk about what happened, share the, the sob story, that tells me 100% the person is trying to get attention from this. Now, you, nobody's ever been emotionally healed or resolved trauma by taking to social media. No, like freaking journal if you're actually looking to process emotions. Social media doesn't do that. Anytime you're posting something to social media, you are looking for attention. That's not necessarily bad, it can be great. Attention is a great way to connect with people at times, but this person is undoubtedly looking for attention. I mean, something just traumatic happened. You processing that would actually be helpful, but just trying to get attention with it, it's not gonna be helpful. It just means you're trying to get attention with it. So I become a little bit suspicious of the self-victimization world here. And what they said on social media, Hi, so a TSA agent at JFK airport punched me in the genitalia, thank you for being proper, yelled at me for having a penis and humiliated me in front of everyone after I told her to stop. Now, awesome that this was a woman TSA agent. For some reason, like it just seems less traumatic than like a, a man bullying you, but I know women can be freaking vicious too, so. I'm just glad it's not a man. The TSA agent then followed me into the women's bathroom and began talking about me to a coworker while I sobbed in a stall, the person added. Uh, I'd be curious, just because like this is none of my business, so naturally I'll get curious about it. Did the TSA agent know this person went into the bathroom? And they're like, hey, there's, there's like a guy with a penis going into the women's restroom. There might be children in there, like there might be women in there, so 
to me, that's terribly inappropriate. So was the TSA agent wanting to intervene on that? Or was the TSA agent just like, hey, I didn't even know they were there, but yeah, I was gossiping and making fun of this person to a coworker. Or self-victimized world, was the TSA agent in the restroom, whether they were trying to like intervene with women being subjected to a biological male in there, and the TSA agent was just accurately reporting the objective data of what happened to a coworker, but this person was lens of a victim and therefore interpreting it as humiliation and bullying. I don't know, questions are being asked. And here you can see this trans person, social media pictures, of course, gotta post a picture of yourself crying. Uh, that's 100% great for getting attention. It has 0% healing properties. And then of course, posting a picture of yourself with a short shirt pulled up so that your kind of bra thing is showing. That again is 100% motivated for attention. In subsequent posts on Twitter, the person claimed to have cried for over an hour. Telling social media that you were crying for over an hour is correlated with 0% healing, 100% attention grab. Uh, this woman says, my balls still hurt so bad. The person claimed not to want the TSA agent to lose her job, but instead wants her educated and the entire entirety of the TSA abolished altogether. Kind of on board with that. Defund the TSA. Fund the police. I think I'm on board with defund TSA. I mean, we do need some kind of screening, heavy screening for weapons being brought on planes. We don't want that. But uh, the TSA, they... Um, I think they overstep. And then naturally the airport apologized for what happened. So we are affiliated with a 501c3 called We Are the 51%. This is based off of all the good people in the world giving extra effort to have a better way of life. You can donate, sponsor, or even make a tax deductible payment to help these children to get food so no child goes to sleep hungry. How you can help is to go to our website MATT55.com. You go to the bottom right hand corner of the video, then click the button that says Retail Customers. You can choose either option, the $5 or the $40 donation options. Either click the Add button below the dollar amount of which one that you choose. Then the next page, choose the quantity of the donation amount. For example, if you'd like to donate $1,000, then you can change the quantity amount to $200. Then click the checkout button in the bottom right hand corner and then on the next page enter your credit card information, name and address. We will send you out a receipt for the amount so you can write this off as a donation on your taxes or also on your business taxes. Remember our main goal is one million dollars to help sponsor 20,000 children. One billion people in the world will lose their life due to starvation due to the famine that has already begun by 2025. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> yeah.